exhaust your list of concessions before you discount the price. That means before you negotiate with a buyer about a lower price, you should have a list of concessions we call a negotiation matrix that are things that you could trade for that lower price. We don't wanna make a unilateral concession here. So maybe we could get a longer term agreement. Maybe we could get a bigger upfront investment. Maybe we could get referrals or introductions or repeat purchases. There could be a lot of things that would be worth that lower price to us. When we have this matrix, we can then go to a negotiation process and say, hey, I'd be happy to lower that price to the number that you needed to hit, but in order to do that, we're gonna have to add a third year onto the agreement. Do you think that's possible? When we're doing that, we're not having price discussions and we're not making a sacrifice in our profit margins. And that's really the important part. So make sure that you exhaust your list of concessions before you discount the price. Most salespeople are so quick to lower the price when they get a little bit of pushback from the buyer. It's dangerous because these price concessions erode the margins that you, your company are trying to protect. And here's why they've never been taught that you need to go into a sales call pre-prepared with a list of concessions to offer. You know, in a perfect world, we would always get our suggested retail price, whatever that is for our company but we don't live in a perfect world. Some of us uh, have the ability to discount. Of course, others watching this video, maybe that's not an option and maybe this rule won't apply to you. But when it comes to price and negotiating, customers want to get a better price. They want to feel like they're getting a value. Now that doesn't mean they always have to get one. They'll still buy from you if you're good enough and you can find enough pain, you might get that uh, suggested retail price. But let's say it's determined and you feel that you're in jeopardy of losing a sale. It's good to go into every negotiation with a prepared list of concessions and put at the bottom of that list, lower the price. It could range anything from the shipment days of the week to priority scheduling on the calendar, to meals and entertainment, to show appreciation, to donating to a certain charity in that customer's name, to spreading out a price increase over several months to maybe adjusting of how things are shipped and what order things are shipped or extra support and service. It really doesn't matter. Every company's list of concessions is going to be proprietary to that company. So what I recommend is you make a list, you and your manager, of all the things you could offer instead of lowering the price. This is a warning to us that when we are at the negotiating table, sometimes we get in our own head thinking that it's and for negotiating the price, the exact cost of whatever it is our solution is. And there's so much more that could be put on the table. And some of those things don't even necessarily cost us very much. So what's helpful is to think about prior to a negotiation, what are my, uh, we could call them transparency levers. These are the things that are important to me that I can negotiate at the table that are not priced. So things like length of contract. If pricing is an issue for them and they want a certain lower price, well, I might be willing to do that in exchange for a two-year commitment instead of a one-year commitment or other kind of value add pieces and services that maybe don't cost me much, but allow me to keep my, my pricing at the integrity that I'd like to have it. And the rule that, that really powers this one is this idea that I don't ever want to give something away without getting something in return. So if I'm going to work through a list of concessions, every one of them has something on the other end. If they're saying we need you to lower your price, I'm saying, can we adjust? We need, we can either adjust the scope. So if you only have this amount of money, we're going to have to take some things out. Where would you like to start? Or I'm going to get a longer contract in exchange for that or better payment terms. However, I might define that. Discuss this rule with your sales team and think about how you can apply it in your sales process. And don't forget to subscribe to Sandler on YouTube for more information, weekly video tips, and to join the discussion in the community. We'll see you over there.